Well, good morning, everybody. It's lovely to see you all. It really is. Um, now, last week, Luke announced that our divisional leaders would be with us this week, helping us celebrate our core anniversary. And he also said, please, everyone, make sure you behave. Shocking. Major Linda, Major Mark, I want to assure you that everyone at Worthing Corps is always very well behaved. Please take no notice of Luke and anything he might say. However, what he said did make me think that we might all perhaps from time to time, particularly those of us that have families, we might just identify with this family. ready and then we'll get going. No. Okay. Hey, what? you just lay out their clothes because it takes me five minutes. Honey, That's perfect. Seriously. Jack. Well, we're already late for church. Hey, you Brian. Go get yourself dressed. Did you pick up my stuff from the dry cleaners? Uh, oh, Yes, but you gotta make it by yourself. Back. Okay. This is all I could find, and the zipper's broken. All right, I'll go grab a safety pin. I got the high score! <sighs> Great, sweetie, but go get dressed. I need you to stay still, okay? Honey. Everybody needs to eat. Here you go. I need one. Here you go. Okay, here you go. I forgot my shoes. Oh. Honey, we gotta go no. back. I wanna take off my shoes. Nobody's taking off their shoes. And I want everybody to understand that we're <gasps> what? We made it. Yep. So, let's have a little wave. Anybody ever been able to identify with that situation oh yes oh yes we all have i reckon well it is lovely to see you all today again here on zoom whether or not you feel you've got it all together or not so the usual checklist have you got your handout um, and a pen which you will probably need today and your Bible as well, although the reading is on the handout. Um, today is our core anniversary. So here's your first opportunity to use your pen. Got a little quiz for you. 
how many years are we celebrating today? Anybody know? How many years? Write it down on your piece of paper. We're going to check answers later on. Okay. So how many years are we celebrating today? But that's the first question. Now, a second question for you, and there'll be um, a number of answers for this question. Okay. Um, over the last 20 years, so since the year 2000, since the millennium, can you write down the names of all the officers that have been here at Worthing? Core officers. Okay. So we're not talking about retired officers. Um, it doesn't matter whether they called themselves the commanding officer or an associate officer or just a core officer. All right. All the officers that have been appointed to Worthing in the last 20 years. Can you write down all their names? That's a tricky one. And my last question is, who were the officers? And you need time to write that down, I know. And you'll need, you know, you'll have some time. Who were the officers that were here when the course celebrated its centenary? Okay, who were the COs here when the Corps celebrated its centenary? So three questions. How many years are we celebrating? Second question, names of all the officers that have been appointed here since the year 2000. And thirdly, who were the officers here when the course, the core officers, I mean, when the course celebrated its centenary? Okay, well, we're going to sing a song together um, and that will give you a bit more time to think about the answer, particularly to that second question. You might need a little bit of time there. Um, we're going to keep you all on mute so you don't need to worry about singing. In fact, I hope you do sing. It's fun. It's fun to sing. Um, you've got the words on your handout sheet. Um, I'm going to suggest that we, we're going to get the group to play two verses for us. And I'm going to suggest that we sing verse one and verse Four. Verse one and verse four. So over to the hallway quartet. Thank you for being with us, guys. We really, oh, I hate it when people call you guys. Sorry. Hallway quartet. We're really glad to have you with us. Thank you. And uh, we're going to enjoy listening to you play two verses and we're going to sing um, whatever verses we choose. All right, off we go. Thanks. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you for that. It's a great um, modern version of that um, fantastic set of words, isn't it? Okay, so answers to the questions. Now I'm just going to bring you on to gallery view so I can see you all. Um, so the first question was, how many years are we celebrating today? Who wants to take a shot at this? Wave, wave your paper if you want to have a go at this. Um, Duncan and Vivian, I think it was Duncan actually waving. Do you want to just unmute yourselves? Go for it. 137. Okay, anybody agree with Duncan? Wendy does. 
Alan does. Yeah, you're right. It's 137. Well done. Um, all right. How many officers have there been here, appointed here, since, 20, uh, since the year 2000? Right. Well, Richard and I had a talk about this before the meeting, and we think there were 15. There have been 15. Did anybody get all 15? Again, just wave if you did. All 15 officers. Janet, are you waving or just fanning yourself? I think she's waving. Go for it, Janet. Um, do you want to unmute yourself? Yep, yeah, brilliant, thank you. I think you might have to sit a bit nearer to your thingy. Can't hear you. There. I can't read your writing, guys. <laughs> Darren and Katrina. Darren and Katrina. Yeah. Um, Liz. Um, Liz Smith. Carol. Yeah. Carol. Yeah. Um, I've put initials down and I can't remember. Um, David and Sarah. Yeah. Peter and Iris. Yeah. Uh, Jane and Mark. Who, sorry? Jane and Mark, Spencer Arnold. Is that 2000 or was that a bit earlier? Matt. Matthew, I think his name is, isn't it? Mark. Oh, oh right, yeah, Mark, yeah. Yeah. Don't know what that means. Oh, I can't remember. Uh, Sue and Gareth. Yeah. So I think that's 15, isn't it? That might have been 15. Yeah, You've yeah, actually got just... three there that I we didn't have. Um, All right. There's David and Janet me? as well. David and oh. Janet as well. Yeah, okay. Yeah. There's also me. There's and also you, yes, and, and Rubina. Yep. And I think there was also Carol and David Chadwick. Did you say that? I said Carol Chadwick, yeah. Sorry, I beg your pardon. Um, so, yeah, I think actually there were 18 in total then because you had three that we didn't have. Did anybody else get all of those? Just give me a wave if you did. Did um, anybody get more than 10? Oh, some of you did. That's brilliant. What about Harris? More than 10? What about Harris and Anna? Yeah, that's what we were saying. What about Harris oh, and Anna? Oh, you're right. Gosh, so there's 20. So in 20 years, there have been 20 officers appointed here. Shocking. Or is it? I don't know. Anyway, very interesting. and Very well done to those of you that got um, most of those right. That's absolutely brilliant. Well done. Okay, um, who were the COs when the course celebrated its centenary? Oh, Tom and... I'm going to test Major Lillian Wilson. <laughs> Unmute yourself, Lillian. Tom and I were the officers. Yeah, it was Tom <laughs> and Lillian, yeah. Yeah. We were here six weeks before the centenary celebration. So you had all the fun of it and none of the hard work of organising. Well, we had a lot of hard work before, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great. Right. Okay. Yeah. Smashing. Thanks, Lillian. Okay, so you know that we've got um, Major Mark and Major Linda Herbert with us this morning and we are really delighted to have you both here. Thanks so much. Um, for coming. Um, you are very well known faces here at Worthing and everything that you do and contribute to our core is very much appreciated and um, you know it is an absolute delight to have you with us. Um, Major Linda is going to lead us in our prayer time and then in um, I think she's entitled it a spot for the, the young at heart. If I haven't got that right Linda you'll have to correct me. Over to you. Thank you Marion. Good morning everybody. It is um, a great pleasure to be with you and a privilege to be here with you on your core anniversary Sunday. Thank you for the invite. As Mary has said, we're going to spend some time in prayer and then we're going to have um, a spot for the young at heart and um, we will share in different ways in these next moments. But firstly, we, we will pray. In 1 Timothy, chapter 2 and verses 1 to 3 and in the message paraphrase it says this Paul says the first thing I want you to do is pray pray every way you know how for everyone you know pray especially for rulers and their governments to rule well 
so that we can live quietly going about our own business of simply living in humble contemplation. This is the way our Saviour God wants us to live. First thing I want you to know is to pray. And so prayer is very important to us, isn't it? We have prayed um, many times and I just wonder how many prayers have been prayed by people of the Worthing Core um, over the years. Too many to count. But we're going to pray some more this morning. Jesus himself gave us a model for prayer, the Lord's Prayer, and we're going to use that at the end of this prayer time. But here onto the screen in the next moments is going to come another little model for us um, using our hands. Many of you may have seen this kind of prayer before, but it just guides us and helps us to pray specifically for different people. And so here is the five fingers of prayer. We're going to start with our thumb. It's positioned closest to us. And so for a moment, I want you to think about those who are closest to you. Your family, your friends, neighbours. And maybe as you picture those people, there are those that need your prayers in a special way this morning. And so we're going to pause for a few moments quietness when you can picture those people in your minds and offer a prayer for them. And then I'll just say a sentence prayer before we move on. Father, we thank you for families who nurture us, for friends who love us by choice, for those who need you in special ways today, those that are close to us, be to them all that they need, we pray. Amen. The next finger we move to is our index finger. It's the finger we use to point. And we're going to think about those who point us in the right direction in life, those in authority. And so we're going to remember teachers. Particularly this week, we remember the police in the light of news that we have received. Prison workers. Those in the justice system and maybe others come to your mind as well. For a moment, remember these people, the responsibilities that they have, and offer prayer for them. Father, we thank you for those who keep us on the right path in life. Those who guide us in society, please watch over them guide and protect them as they seek to guide and protect us and today we pray you will strengthen them as they need amen and then we come to our middle finger as you look at it it's probably the tallest it's the it's the finger that stands before us and we're going to think about those that we look to, who are prominent in leadership. And so we're going to think about our government, world leaders, the general of the Salvation Army, our territorial leadership team, and Major Marion, who is the leader of this corps. As you picture some of those people, Offer prayer for them just now. Father, we pray that you will give wisdom to those who govern and those who lead us. 
We thank you for them. But we pray that you will give them courage to step out boldly, to take us forward, to do what is right. And so we ask you to bless them today in their leadership. The next finger that we look at is our, our ring finger. Often um, people consider this to be the weakest of our fingers. And so we want to pray today for those who particularly are in need of our prayers. Those who are perhaps unwell and those that grieve. Father, please be with those for whom today will be difficult. We pray that you will strengthen them. We pray that you will fill them with your peace and surround them with your love. Amen. And our final finger, the smallest finger, last but not least, we're going to pray for ourselves. Sometimes we're so busy praying for others and situations that we forget to pray for ourselves. And so this morning, what are your needs? What concerns you? What do you need God's help and guidance with? For a moment, pray for yourself. Father, we thank you that you know us, you understand us, and you are with us. And for this we give you thanks. Be to us, each, all that we need you to be today. In Jesus' name we pray. And together now, let's pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory for ever and ever amen amen thank you for praying with me and this week perhaps as you sit quietly you may look at your hand and again you might just call to mind those aspects those people that you can pray for so here we have a spot for for the young at heart and anyone indeed who wants to join in uh, but there's, there's a thought behind all of this i have a question has anyone ever said to you Will you just finish what you have started? I'm a great starter, but I have to confess that I don't always finish what I have started. So here's my confession time. What if you have any hobbies? I do, and here are some of them. Knitting. If we're going on a long journey in the car, I like to knit. Maybe if I'm sat watching something on television, I like to knit. But my confession is that I have lots of things on the go still to be finished. I have knitted squares of all sizes just waiting to be sewn up into a blanket. At some point I need to finish what I have started. 
I wonder if you like to read. Sometimes I do. And uh, the truth is, sometimes I pick up a book and I start to read, but can lose interest and put it down and never pick it up again. Have any of you ever done that? And sometimes uh, I start a sentence and forget to finish it because I get distracted mid flow. Here's a question for the young people and you older people can consider it too. Do you sometimes start something and then lose interest and go off and do something else? You can have a little conversation there if there are a few of you in the home at this moment. Perhaps young people, you might start a painting and then go off to play and leave the picture half done. Perhaps you start tidying your toys away and then go off to watch television, leaving the task half done. Give us a wave if you do some of these things. There's a few people waving, few people having an honesty moment um, with us this morning. Well, we're going to play a bit of a game this morning. It's called Finish This Off. And what's going to happen is we're going to see some uh, words on the screen and only a few of them will appear. And the, the goal, the aim of this is to finish off the words. They're songs. So you may even like to sing the first part in order to prompt yourself to finish the rest of the song. So here's the first one. Incy wincy spider climbed up the water spout. Finish it off, back your brains. Here's the answer. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sunshine and dried up all the rain and incy wincy spider climbed up the spout again. Well done if you manage to finish that one. Number two, back to our childhood. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down and broke his crown and... Oh, here's the answer. Jill came tumbling after. Well done if you got that. Number three, we're still in the realm of nursery rhymes. Sing along if you like. Bar bar black sheep, have you any wool? Yes sir, yes sir, three bags full. One for the master, one for the dame. Finish it off. One for the little boy. Oh, one for the little boy who lived down the lane. Let's try the next one. Red and yellow and pink and green. Orange and purple and blue. I can what? Let's see if we can finish it off. Sing a rainbow. Sing a rainbow too. How are you doing? That's four. Number five. You might want to do the actions to this one. Row, row, row the boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 merrily. And the answer is to finish it off. Life is but a dream. Keeping to the nautical theme, here's the next one. The big ship sails on the alley alley o, the alley alley o, the alley alley o. The big ship sails on the alley alley o. What's the rest of the sentence? Here it is. On the last day of September. I'm going to move to some songs that we may sing in um, Sunday school or in the core. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. And the answer is to finish it off. And he holds us in his hands. Here's another one that has many actions too. Father Abraham had many sons. Many sons had Father Abraham. I was one of them and so are you. How does it finish? So let's all praise the Lord. Number nine, nearly there. To the musical in the story of Joseph and the Technicolor dream coat. I wore my coat with golden lining, bright colors shining, wonderful and new. 
And in the east, the dawn was breaking, bright colours waking. How does it end? Any dream will do. And our final one. Give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning. Give me oil in my lamp, I pray. Give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning. How does it end? Keep me burning till the break of day. Well, that's all 10. Let's come back onto the screens and um, we'll see how people did. Did any of you manage to get all 10? Nine? Wave at me if you did. Nine, well done, excellent. Eight, seven, six. Well, we won't go any lower than that. I'm sure that many of you did very well with finishing off uh, the sentences. Over the past weeks as a core, you have been working your way through the Book of Acts and you have finished what you have started. So congratulations on that. You will have met the character Paul as you've looked into Acts, a great follower of Jesus. And today, Mark will dip back into that book again and find some words of Paul. And these are the words that I would just like to draw your attention to now. It's from Acts chapter 20 and verse 24. And this is what Paul says. My only aim is to finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me, the task of testing testing the task of keeping the good news of God's grace. My only aim is to finish the race and to complete the task. Sometimes we don't finish things because we lose interest. Sometimes we don't finish things because we are distracted. Sometimes we don't finish things because it gets too hard. Paul didn't lose interest. He wasn't distracted in spite of some really hard things, he kept going. He remained faithful to God and to the task of sharing the good news of Jesus. So let me encourage you, young and old alike, to keep following Jesus right to the end. There will always be things that might make you want to stop, but don't stop. Keep on going. Keep loving Jesus. Keep following Jesus. Keep serving Jesus finish what you started and may God bless and strengthen you each as you endeavour to do this. Thank you for sharing. Good morning. It's great to see you all today. We're particularly pleased that Carol has managed to get here this week. It's good to see you, Carol. And we're very pleased to be welcoming our divisional leaders too. Some good news to begin with this week. Hope has just heard from her chambers that she has been offered tenancy. This means that she now has a permanent job and will be given her own court cases and that she is now a fully fledged barrister. This is a great achievement and we send her our congratulations. We still have a number of people who are poorly. Please continue to pray for Margaret Fitch and James Thomas. Emma Carmody is still not feeling at all well and we send our love and best wishes to Emma herself and Mike and Darcy too. Captain Barbara Truffay is undergoing some tests just at the moment. We offer both her and Stephen our very best wishes. We also send our love to all those who are unwell at the moment. Please keep on praying for each other and particularly the people we've mentioned. The funeral for Steph Carrington Mole will be held this Friday at 3 p.m. Some information about other dates, times and events. There's a great deal going on in the coming weeks and months, so please do listen and watch out for information. There is some information on the Facebook page about the big collection, which will be happening in a different way this year. Please take a look and consider whether there's anything you could do to support this appeal. This Thursday will be number seven of our Bible course. On Saturday at 11 a.m. we'll be holding an online coffee morning. If you'd like to come to this, please let Major Marion know. The weekend of our Harvest Festival will take place on Saturday and Sunday the 10th and the 11th of October. We would do like donations for food parcels given out at Christmas time. So it would be great if you could give this some serious thought. We've had some information in the last pastoral letter and more will come with the next one. If you don't regularly receive this, again, please let Marion know. 
The Territorial Congress will be happening over the weekend of the 24th and 25th of October, and there will be online events happening. The access information for these events will come in the pastoral letter shortly. Thank you for your continued financial giving to the core. Our offering music today is a reminder of a beautiful song that reminds us of God's provision. We hope that this speaks to your hearts and minds. pray together. Dear Lord God, we thank you for um, this opportunity um, to just sit and think about how we can show our love to you with our financial offerings. And um, we ask that whatever it is we've been thinking about in these last minutes, that uh, you will help us to be faithful to that commitment. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, as Luke said, it's been lovely to have um, Carol with us online this morning. Um, Joyce has been with us two or three weeks now. Um, Carol's joined us this morning. And Bob and Pearl, who have joined us uh, in the past, have today managed to get themselves on camera. So can we spotlight them, Rich, please? Bob and Pearl! Everybody give Bob and Pearl a wave! Oh, it's so lovely to see you both. It really is great. Perhaps next week we'll give you a chance to actually speak to us and share something of what's been going on for you in these last few months. But it is really lovely to see you. Well done. Thank you very much. And thank you to Liz, I guess it is, that's kind of been helping you um, get set up online. Absolutely fantastic. Well, now, um, you all know that we've been... Um, and Major Linda has referred to this, we've been reading our way through Acts and thinking about the impact of some of that for, for us. Um, 
Luke is going to share a few words with us. I just gave him a couple of questions. I asked him, what's God been saying to you through the book of Acts? Have you got a favourite episode? And has there been a particular challenge? Over to you, Luke. Hello again. So the first question was, what has God been saying to you through the book of Acts? And my answer to that, to that is that maybe we need to be more outspoken about our beliefs of God in today's society. I think we can all agree that now more than ever is a time when people need to know about Christ and the difference that he can make. So has there been a favourite episode? I kind of took that as a favourite verse um, and I went through the Bible app on my phone and looked at the verses I'd highlighted and I found a verse from very early on actually and it's in Acts 1 verse 7 and it says he said to them it is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And finally, have I received a particular challenge from the book? Uh, and it's to be more like Paul, uh, not in the sense that I'm willing to go to prison for speaking the gospel, but that I want to have more of Paul's desire to testify and witness the gospel. As I mentioned earlier, at the minute in my work, I see many people who need to know God and who are maybe distressed or concerned with the situation that we find ourselves in. And I've been very challenged as we've studied Acts to be more willing to get out of my comfort zone and speak to others about something I know can change their lives. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Luke. That's really great. I think the key to your prayer, actually, is in the verse that you highlighted. You will receive power and you will be my witnesses. And yeah, very early on in Acts. But actually, we see that out working out all the way through Acts and um, right to the very end, right to the last couple of chapters that we looked at last week. So thank you very much for that. Now, in a moment, Major Mark is going to unpack um, those verses um, that you'll see on your handout. Um, but just before he does that, Mavis is going to read those verses for us. Um, we had a kind of difficult episode, didn't we, last week with internet and stuff like that. But we're hoping that it's all going to be fine today. And so, Mavis, would you read for us, please? Um, Acts chapter 20, verses 22 to 24. You know that I did not hold back anything that helped you as I preached and taught in public and in your homes. To Jews and Gentiles alike, I gave solemn warning that they should turn from their sins to God and believe in our Lord Jesus. And now... In obedience to the Holy Spirit, I am going to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there. I only know that in every city, the Holy Spirit has warned me that prison and troubles wait for me. But I reckon my own life to be worth nothing to me. I only want to complete my mission and finish the work that the Lord Jesus gave me to do which is to declare the good news about the grace of God. Amen. 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 Thank you, Mavis, for, for reading those verses uh, so clearly for us. Good morning, everyone. It's lovely to be with you again uh, today. Sorry it can't be in person. We're looking forward to that day again, aren't we? When we can, we can meet in our building and we can do all the things that we love to do as part of our worship. Um, we just need to be a bit patient on those things. We're, um, we're not out of the woods yet, are we? Uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a little bit more time. But uh, the leadership team of your core will, will make the wise decisions about the right time uh, to recommence um, in-person worship. There's no hurry. The priority remains for all of us to stay safe and stay healthy. But one of the things, of course, that we, we miss when we, we get, uh, can't gather for worship is, is those hugs and handshakes 
that um, we share so freely together. So if you happen to be sitting next to someone on, on the settee, just put your arm around them, give them a hug. So it's glad to see you, glad to be with you in worship um, today. Um, I don't know whether you, you've noticed, um, one of the big challenges about um, staying at home for Sunday morning worship, it certainly is for me at the moment where I'm sitting in our lounges, that the, the smell of Sunday dinner is, is growing and has over the last hour. And that, if, um, if nothing else, reminds me that I need to be brief and succinct th this morning. Um, as always in our home, we know when dinner is ready because the smoke alarm goes. So if you hear the smoke alarm in the background, uh, you know that uh, dinner is ready. So here's, here's the point for this morning. Um, and I just want to start by making a suggestion that um, courage takes practice, doesn't it? Have you noticed that? Particularly, I guess, since lockdown, courage takes practice. Um, we got used to being in at home and, and maybe still for some, it's I'm not sure that I want to go out yet. I feel much safer indoors. Courage takes practice. And it does for us as a core, even as today we celebrate 137 years of serving our community. But what I do know is this, and these verses will pull it out for us um, very briefly this morning, is that one ounce, one ounce of faith, one ounce of faith will always overcome a ton of fear. One ounce of faith will always overcome a ton of fear. I'm sorry that I haven't been able to journey with you through the Acts of the Apostles. It's a great book, isn't it? It's a great book. Thanks, Luke, um, for sharing some of your thoughts this morning. Um, Luke, of course, um, who wrote the, the Gospel of Luke, um, also wrote um, parts of, of or most of Acts of the Apostles. And for some of the time, he actually journeyed with Paul. And um, I just want us to go back to those verses that, that Mavis read to us a few moments ago. I, I, you've got them on your sheet, or you may have them from your own, own Bibles. And, and really briefly, till the smoke alarm goes off in the background anyway, or maybe hopefully before that, I just want to say four things that for our core anniversary today might help us as we, we move through this period of uncertainty um, with the faithful God alongside us. So if you've got the sheet in front of you or, or, or the scripture, here's, um, here, here's four things. I, I just want to um, pull out these verses in a few moments this morning. Let's jump, in, jump into verse 22. Just by way of context, here's Paul at the church of, of Ephesus. He loved the church at Ephesus. It was a church that he was there at the beginning of, and he, he was there as it took its first steps in that huge cosmopolitan city. And he was blessed, his ministry was blessed, but he had a real sense that it was time to, to move on. God was Pauling, calling Paul to something new. And he speaks about that in these verses, and maybe there were word for someone this morning and maybe for our church even um, at, at this time. Do you see it there in, in verse 22, at the beginning of verse 22? And now compelled by the Spirit. Compelled by the Spirit. So it's a, it, that's an interesting phrase. Uh, we haven't got time to go in, in, into the Greek, but literally it, it, it says, uh, bound by the Spirit. My heart is wrapped up in the spirit i get a tugging in my soul that won't go away and i i want to say that this new thing that paul was being led to was a prompting of the spirit he had no choice god was stirring in him to do something and i wonder if that's ever been your experience where for some reason just at a very straightforward level you you've just felt you needed to give someone a call or send them a text, drop them a line, or before COVID, just knock on the door. You know, that thing that I've just got to do this, I don't, don't know why, but I've got to do it. 
that's a, a prompting of the spirit. The, the need for you to do something because within you, you know you have to do it. I would say that's a, a, the Holy Spirit at work within you. I don't know why I have to do it, but I've got to. And that happens at so many levels, both personally and as a core. Um, I'm, I'm rubbish at most things. The people that work with me will tell you that. And they'll be pleased to tell you. They, they keep me humble by reminding me of the things that I can't do. But under God, I know the things I can do. I know why I have been allowed to take up space on this planet. God has made me good at the things that God wants me to be good at. And the same is true for you, whatever your age, whatever your circumstance, God has made you good at something for a reason. So the challenge out of this prompting of the spirit for us this morning is to look for the unique thing that God has made for you to do. Look for your purpose in life. I, I know we might say, well, if we compare our lives to the people's lives that we've read about in, in Acts of the Apostles, it doesn't look that exciting or that radical. That's okay. God has made you good at what he wants you to be good at. And it's a stirring of the spirit. I'm compelled by the spirit to do two things. That's the first thing. Look at the second thing that just comes after that in, in verse 22. I'm compelled by the spirit to do something. I don't know what's going to happen. Do you see it there? I'm going to Jerusalem. Uh, I, not knowing what will happen to me there. I take by faith this stirring of the spirit within me and I step out in faith, not knowing what is going to happen. God calls us to step out in faith. The Bible is full of examples of people who had no idea what was going to happen to them, but they knew they had to step out in faith. The only thing certain about the future is that it's uncertain. We don't know what the future is going to bring. But God is with us. God has called us to step out in faith. To, as Luke has just said, to speak out our faith. To testify boldly. Step by step. Action by action. Decision by decision. Dream by dream. You know... Any dream will do? Well, at some point it might, but we know in this context that the dreams that God has given us that won't go away are the dreams that we follow. 137 years, you as a church, Worthing Salvation Army Corps, has existed. I, I can say this because I'm not in the same room as you. You're aging well. You look well on it. God has been good through the years. But what we do know is that time passes really quickly. Jesus is coming. And we step out into new things as a core, not knowing. But what we do know is that obedience leads to opportunity. Obedience leads to opportunity. Okay, there's much more I could say on that. But I, I just want to move on to look at, look at verse 23. Because I'm compelled by the Spirit, I step out in faith. But here's a warning. Look at verse 23. I only know that in every city the Holy Spirit warns me that prison and hardships are facing. Now, listen, if you step out in faith in Worthing today in the name of the Salvation Army, it's very, very unlikely now you're going to get arrested unless you do something really stupid. Okay? You're not going to be imprisoned for your faith. But there will be resistance. When you come up with a new idea, a new way of doing things, a new direction for your core, there will be resistance. We have to understand that. Obstacles will be put in our way. There will be criticism from others. There will be discouragement. Sometimes it's a battleground, isn't it? 
It is. But I'm compelled by the Spirit. I can't help it. I have to be obedient to what God has called me to do. So this is a time, even in lockdown, even as we struggle with so many new experiences, this is a call to deep surrender. It's a call to give God first place in our hearts, to know him with all our hearts and minds and souls. It's a time to pray that prayer that was so beautifully prayed. Holy Spirit, precious promise falls on me when darkness surrounds me and I don't know which way to go. Holy Spirit, would you pour yourself on me again? And just very briefly, if I may, look at the fourth thing I want to say, and it's there in verse 24. Just see that there in, in, in verse 24. Just see the order of things. I've been compelled. I have to do what I'm doing because this is, this is a God thing. I, I, I'm stepping out, not fully understanding what will happen, what the consequences will be. I, I step out in spite of criticism and opposition and discouragement. And here it is in verse 24. Here's the fourth thing. My only aim, my only aim is to finish the race and complete the task that the Lord Jesus has given me. If we, if we were gathered in, in the building today, there'd be a white ribbon on the flag for Steph. There would be. Because she's finished the task that God has given her to do. Servant of God, well done. And, and, and I may be pushing this truth a bit too far, but if we, we read those final pages of Revelation that we hear so often read, there'll be no more tears and no more crying and no more pain and no more sorrow when the task is done. In my imagination that often runs wild, you know, I, I often see, I imagine God looking at the sweat that's running from our foreheads because of the work that we have done in the name of Jesus. Precious promise fall on me. We're going to finish the work, the task that God has given us to do. And so on this 137th core anniversary, I look for that thing. I sense that thing that God is calling me to do. I, I step out not fully understanding what it will mean, but I do know that not everyone will get it. Not everyone will get it, but I am determined to finish the race and complete the task that Jesus has given me to do. And to God alone be the honour and the glory. Let's pray, shall we? Father, I thank you for the Worthing core. I thank you for every, every day of its 137 years of history and of service. I thank you for every victory that has been won in your name. And we claim we claim by faith the future that says to us, the best is still yet to be. So Father, would you enable us to dream new dreams? Father, would you enable us, compelled by the Spirit, through the nagging of the Spirit in our souls, to step out in faith again, in new ways, in different ways, to reach those that no one else has been able to reach for your kingdom's sake. Father God, we thank you for each other. Be with us as we continue to serve you, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And God bless you all. Let's sing. Sorry, that's me. It's still <laughs> me. I'm getting, getting carried away. Um, let's uh, sing two verses, shall we, of our, of our song um, on the sheet. Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful day. Day I will never forget. C can we, um, c I don't know 
it won't make any difference to the musicians. But can we sing, can we sing verse two and three? We're just going to sing two verses. But I'd just like us to sing verse two and three. Born of the spirit from life from above into God's family. We're celebrating our family today, aren't we? Our church family. So let's sing, um, let's sing verse two and then uh, verse three. And then, um, sorry, I was told by your CEO. And I dare not question your CEO to lead the final song and to pray the benediction. So I'm going to do that. Verse two and then verse three together, please. Thanks, band. Thanks, band. Thanks, everyone. Um, God be with you in these days. Here's, here's a benediction for us all. May this day bring Sabbath rest to your heart and your home. May God's image in you be restored and your imagination in God be restored. May the gravity of material things be lightened and the relativity of time slow down. May you know grace to embrace your own finite smallness in the arms of God's infinite greatness. May God's word feed you and his spirit lead you into the week and into the life to come. Amen. Amen and God bless you all. Well, thank you very much, Mark and Linda. That's been an absolute pleasure um, to have you with us. Um, you've said lots of things. I've actually written loads of notes um, from some of the things that you said, um, which is not that uncommon for me, but it is a mark of how much I personally have appreciated um, all that you've done. And I'm wondering if, um, just for the sake of the recording, I've switched to gallery view, and I'm wondering if we can give Mark and Linda a round of applause. Shall we do that? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed for today. That really has been lovely. Um, and thank you to, um, to Richard for all his background work, to Luke, um, to the Hallway Quartet, to everybody that takes part. Mavis, um, who got a second go this week. Thank you um, very much Thanks, for that, Mavis. Mavis. And um, to everybody else that helps and supports, it, it sends messages sends emails saying we'll be praying for you this Sunday um, when we ourselves can't be there. That's happened just this morning. So um, thank you very much to everybody. And I hope you all have a, a really lovely week this week with lots of God's blessings in it. 
Um, we're going to have coffee fellowship, of course. So um, there'll be a kind of 90 second break. I'm cutting it down. Have you noticed that? 90 second break while I go and get my coffee and um, opportunity for you all to do that as well. And um, we'll see you when we see you. God bless you all. Bye bye now.